And good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Congen Water Radio. I am so glad that you are here with us today. Uh, let me get my glasses on because I don't know where I put them. Oh, there they are. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay, sorry about that. We are featuring Congen Water, the Congen Water Health and Information Call, where we consider, clarify, and correct the conventional wisdom around Congen Water technology, the different machines, the science behind water types, uses, and benefits the testing process, the maintenance and cleaning of the machines, and much, much more. We also explore a plethora of other topics as we teach, promote, and discuss the three-pronged approach to health and wellness, hydration, detoxification, and complete macro and micronutrition. I am family physician, Dr. Lisa Battle Singletary, your virtual keto coach, and I'll be joined by my co-host and fearless leader, Mr. Terrence Hope, Enagic 6A distributor extraordinaire. And together, we bring you the best of both worlds. This is call number 382. And our topic today is so interesting, turning my phone down so I don't get those pesky beeps and stuff. Um, our topic today is stress relief at your fingertips. And we have a special, special guest that's gonna join us a little bit later today. And I'm so excited to bring her to you. But before that, I, I can hardly contain my excitement today. I present to you, I bring to you our fearless leader and my co-host, Mr. Terrence Hope, a Magic 6A distributor, extraordinaire. Mr. Hope, are you with us this fine Kongan afternoon? Yes, Dr. Singletary, I am. And I can hardly contain myself listening to your introduction. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we thank you all for joining us here on the Kongan Water Health and Information Call here on Kongan Water Radio. Uh, we're so very fortunate to have Dr. Lisa Singletary here with us. Dr. Lisa Singletary is a board certified physician, now retired, lending her time to the approaches to health and wellness using nutrition, hydration, and detoxification. She is a wealth of information, of course, and as a medical doctor, um, <clears throat> she is a wealth of knowledge that can help us to understand our health from various perspectives, and as well, how we can use those natural things, as we call them, uh, and to yeah, improve our health. You know, oftentimes when I talk about health improvement, I often uh, guide people's minds to what you see in the wild uh, from coast to coast in the U.S. to Africa, to Nigeria, to Brazil, in the jungles, we see wild animals everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and if we actually take a notice, we might see that and notice that the animals that live in the wild don't suffer from the same type of chronic illnesses that the humans do. Now, one may say, oh, well, they have a different physiology. There's a difference between an animal and a human. Yeah, okay, fine. Well, let's just get down to some core uh, facts. The one thing is that they do not have the same diet that we have. Uh, they enjoy uh, full nutrition through uh, produce, fruits, vegetables, and proteins, and whatever water they get their hands on, um, or pause. And they um, uh, are healthy. And why is that? Because at full nutrition, the body is designed to be self-healing. Um, the humans can have the same opportunity, but you don't see that among the human population because we have been bombarded with so many different types of um, matter um, that are said to be consumable, which are not necessarily food. And so we look at things <laughs> That's good. You know, like, you know, the Skittles and the Twizzlers and the you know, let me not, uh, let me let me tread gently on some people's favorites, little quote unquote snacks, you know, um, 
And McDonald's, we're pretty sure maybe not even really be food. Yes, I said it. I said it right here. Um, but yet we consume all these things. What is actually soda? Ginger ale, Sprite, Seven Up. Where does that exist naturally? Why are we as humans drinking it? Where is it as, as a benefit? And where is it on the health pyramid where you see those things that are said to be, okay, these are the things you need to eat, yeah? Uh, not. So we need to make sure we're eating organic um, fruits and vegetables, produce, proteins, those things that are designed for the body since millennia, since the beginning of time. And not so much those things which have been brought about for profit's sake, where manufacturers have looked to find, to find consumables that we would purchase infinitum uh, because we just wanted the way, we liked the way it tastes, or we liked the way it was advertised to us, or there was a clown on television that said, hey, eat this burger. Uh, you know who I'm talking about. So, um, you know, we have to uh, get back to what is the core. And so here on the Condon Water Inf Inf Health and Information Call, we look to bring you back to that core. Full hydration, proper nutrition, proper detoxification, so your body can be as it is designed to be, healthy, yeah? And so I just gave a brief summary very quickly on the Congan water. What is Congan water? We have heard so much about it. People run all around trying to find it uh, in different forms and not always well informed as to what they are in fact looking for. Yeah, so uh, what is Congan water? Congan water is known in its science term as electrolyzed reduced water. Electrolyzed reduced water. And what is that? Electrolyzed reduced water is a type of water that is processed with electricity. And when you hit water with electricity, you create the formation of molecular structures in the water uh, that are responsible for its antioxidant effect and uh, maximization of hydration of the water, as well as energy boosting. So uh, Congan water has, has a specific property to it because of the process it goes through with electricity. Now, Congan water has also become widely known as alkaline water. And for that reason, people have gone out seeking alkaline water, not knowing on being unaware that you can create alkaline water in through many different processes. But those processes will not necessarily lead to those things that will be healthy for you, yeah? So Congan water goes through electrolysis through the use of electricity. If you go to the store these days, you'll find the aisles filled with alkaline water. And you're thinking, hey, I heard about that alkaline water. It's healthy for me. Let me go get that. Wrong. That is just a deception that was brought about upon the popularity of Congan water. And whereas Congan water became known as alkaline water, as opposed to its true name, electrolyzed reduced water. Manufacturers of bottled water said, hey, we can make a profit from this. We can create an alkaline water of a different type. And who will know the difference? No one would, of course, because what they do is they take alkaline minerals like calcium and magnesium, dump it in water, and then say, here's your alkaline water. And you're thinking, hey, there it is. That's the water I heard about. Let me drink this. And in fact, you should have been drinking electrolyzed, reduced water through an electrical process known as Kangen, two different waters. Congan water has an antioxidant effect. Mineralized drinking water does not necessarily have the same effect, yeah? So, and then you have to be careful what kind of alkaline minerals are being used in the production of the alkaline water in the store because some of them may not be plant-based and the minerals would need to be plant-based in order to be absorbable or what is otherwise known as bioavailable, yeah? So, condom water, an electrolyzed, antioxidant, energy boosting, hydrating water. Alkaline water in the store, not the same. So be aware. And we wanna make sure we're getting the right kind of water. So on, on our calls, we'll be talking more about condom water. We'll be talking more about electrolyzed, reduced water. We'll be looking to bring you more of the knowledge base and information you need to make informed decisions about the kind of things you take in as food, nutrition, hydration, and detoxification, and look to be a benefit for, to, to you. On our calls, you can always come in and ask us questions with our Q&A session, and we have many ways to get that done, even through the chats on uh, Facebook. Many of you are seeing us now live on 
Facebook Live, on Congo Water Radio, on Congo Water Nation Facebook page, Congo Water Nation UK. And I probably forgot Congo Water Dubai, so I better, I better get back to them. You know, so enjoy. Come see us. Love to speak to you. And now we have our illustrious Dr. Lisa Singletary and our special guests going over different health uh, information that are a benefit to you. Dr. Singletary. Thank you, Mr. Hope. Thank you for that. Um, those amazing remarks. Yeah, I love that matter that's consumable. Mm. That's a new definition for industrial processed, quote unquote, uh. food. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Consumable matter. Okay. So, all right, everybody. I'm so excited to bring to you our special guest today. And hopefully, you know, our topic today is, and Mr. Hope, could you please um, find Anita and give her the co-host, give her co-host privileges? Oh, sure, 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 sure. So um, someone very special to this call. He actually helped to get this call started as far as um, getting us to the technology to go visual. Said, you know, I, there's someone that you need to talk to. And I said, okay, I'm gonna talk to her. And I had the most wonderful, lovely discussion with this, this young lady. And so I'm gonna introduce her to you right now. Anita Prendergast is a licensed massage therapist and integrative relationship coach. She helps you balance family, health, and business using a holistic approach that includes physical, mental, and spiritual wellness practices. In her 15 years, she doesn't look like she could have that much experience, but she does. As her 15 years as a massage therapist, she focused on providing and continues to focus on providing services for women, children, and couples. She holds a bachelor's degree in education, sorry, exercise science, specializing in motor development and early childhood education from the University of South Carolina. Anita founded Village Academy for Families, LLC, which provides education and resources personally designed and curated to help families create, maintain, and develop healthy relationships at home and in the community. Boy, don't we need that. Anita, thank you so much for sharing your time and expertise with our Congan Water family. Tell me, how are you doing today? Thank you so much for that introduction, Dr. Lisa. And to be honest with you, I am actually not okay today. <laughs> today, um, as our topic suggests, we're talking about stress. And I know this is an international call. So for those of you who don't know here in the United States, we have been under a week of absolute stress for our country with um, police brutality, um, focusing on um, you know, on racial issues, which has been a constant in not only the United States, but I'm pretty sure a lot of um, countries as well. So today I'm not okay. <laughs> I am a little stressed, but that's okay. Because as we will see that some stress is good, not all stress is bad. And um, so that's kind of like what we'll talk about today. And like um, Mr. Um, Mr. Terrence, Mr. Hope said there, um, you have to be careful what you put in your body. You have to know what you what you put in your body as far as water, food, or anything else. But also be careful what you feed and put into your mind and your soul. And that's what feeds on the stress. So um, yeah, so I'll keep going. <laughs> I didn't know if you had questions. But um, so if I can share my screen, I did um, do a let me see if I can share my screen and we may or may not um, follow along with it. <laughs> there should be a green button at the bottom. It's so the um, there you go. Okay, there we go. Let me see here. So um, this is basically what we're talking about. Stress relief at your fingertips because I believe that you don't need to necessarily, as a massage therapist, 
I'm here to tell you that you don't necessarily need to go to a professional massage therapist to find stress relief through massage. My focus, like I said, in my Village Academy for Families is to teach the average person how to do these things at home because I believe that people should get massage every day. <laughs> can most of us afford it? No, but you can afford it because you can do it right at home. It's right in your, in your hands at your fingertips. So first let's go into this statistic here, 90%. It is estimated that 75 to 90% of all doctor's visits in the United States are in some way related to stress. And stress causes more than half of, America, of Americans to fight with people close to them. So as you can see, like I'm saying, with what's going on in our communities now, everyone is just stressed. We're at, a, at this level of stress that we can't seem to get over. So it is my, um, as a teacher, it is my um, responsibility and my, how I'm dealing with my stress to educate people on how to manage their stress. Um, sometimes you say stress relief and um, there's always a, a minimal amount of stress that we keep, which is good because that is responsible for our survival. So, so, you know, so to manage stress so that it doesn't overwhelm us and get away from us. That is the goal and what I would like to teach. And one of the ways that um, I teach stress management is obviously through touch. Now, I'm pretty sure that you've talked on this program before being a doctor that you are, is that the largest organ in the body is the skin. <laughs> right. And the skin is and touch is one of our first is the first sense that we develop in the in the womb. So how do we um, experience touch through the skin and the skin? It communicates these eight emotions that you can communicate from birth through your skin. You can communicate anger, fear, disgust and sadness. This is all before your verbal communication happens. This can be communicated through your skin, but you can also communicate sympathy, gratitude, happiness, and love. So often we experience touch, we experience um, inappropriate touch is what I call, and that causes our anger and our fear of being touched and um, just discusses all the negative things we think of touch. I tell you sometimes when I go to the, um, to the grocery store and it's crowded and you know I want to get through and I have my daughter with me and I'll just sort of gently push people like out of my way and my daughter goes crazy why are you pushing them I'm like I'm not pushing them <laughs> I'm touching them with intent and we'll go over the um the ways to um provide appropriate touch in public so that it doesn't cause um adverse reactions so you use the intent and you push and you go along with excuse me because a lot of times when you're in a crowded grocery store they can't hear you say excuse me so you're yelling it 10 times they don't know who you're talking to so that gentle touch on the appropriate area which is usually the upper back or shoulder and um you know just to slide people out of the way and with that touch it is important because you're also making that connection to that person in your community so let me back up a little bit when I say touch and massage um, and every day in our everyday lives, I do mean um, the people, not just for ourselves, but in the community as well. Because in order to have these happiness and, and gratitude and feel that as opposed to negative things that we feel with touch, there has to be this connection that we have with each other in the community. So I always say that we can have all of the gun laws that that you know, we can do, we can pass all these gun laws, we can you know, do all this stuff, if, but if we're not focusing in on the person, then it doesn't matter. We can have all the laws we want, it doesn't matter. That person, as people say, you know, is the people who kill people, not the guns who kill people. And um, no matter how you think of that, you know, it's essentially saying that 
people need to feel connected to one another. And the only way that people can feel connected to one another and in their community is through physical touch. Because out of all of the senses, touch is the only one that is reciprocal. I can't touch you without being touched. You can't touch me without being touched. You know, I can look at you and I can see you, but you don't necessarily have to see me. I can hear you, but you don't necessarily have to hear me. Trust me, I know. And my husband, I talk to him all the time and he's like, oh, I didn't hear you, but <laughs> I can hear him. So the only time that people are really truly connected to one another is through touch. And that's why I believe touch is so important in the mental health of our country. So let's go um, talk about the nervous system. These slides may be out of order a little bit, but um, just work with me. So, um, you know, we have the nervous system, we got the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system. One is automatic, which means it happens without us thinking about it. The other one is um, we can control it to some point. Okay, and then you have the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic ner nervous system. And this is sort of just how it breaks down. Okay, the sympathetic nervous system is responsible for our fight, flight, and freeze since, um, re reactions to stress. Now, what I say is all stress is not bad. You can have good and bad stress. So if you think about, um, if you're in a stressful situation as far as um, a barking dog and you get scared, you can either um, get scared, you can fight and stay there and try to, you know, fight the dog, which I don't know why you would, but you, you could do that. Or you can flight, you can run away, which might also be dangerous because then a dog can chase you or whatever. Or you might just freeze. And sometimes that is the best answer if you just freeze and, um, you know, it's just something that's involuntary. But let's think about it also in, in the sense of if you're if you're feeling um, like if you're trying to get ready for a presentation, okay? You have that central nervous system that you can either fight, flight, or freeze. So you can either fight and say, okay, I'm gonna work through this presentation, I'm gonna study, I'm gonna, um, or for let's say exams, I'm gonna study and I'm gonna prepare and, um, you know, cause I'm afraid I don't wanna fail. So you're gonna go through that fight. You can either flight and say, okay, I'm not studying for this, whatever happens, happens, or you can freeze. And sometimes that has, that has to do with anxiety. So there are ways to get past these sympathetic nervous system responses. And, um, and as we can see here, it's, when it becomes chronic, that's long-term, then that's when you definitely need to get help. But if it's just the ordinary um, response, then that's something that you can take care of yourself at home through breathing exercises, massage, which is what we'll talk about, and the mindset. So over here, we have the parasympathetic nervous system, which is often um, things that we can control. And um, so the parasympathetic system is, is respond actually these you can't control, it's responsible for our feel-good hormones for the release of our feel-good hormones, such as serotonin, oxytocin, dopamine, endorphins. And these things, these two systems needs to be in balance. So when we're in a constant state of fight, flight, or freeze, like we find ourselves in the United States now with this violence around us, especially if you belong to a particular um, group, of people, then we're then our parasympathetic that's responsible for releasing these good hormones is suppressed. So we never get to that point where our feel good hormones are actually in effect. We're always in this fight, flight, or freeze um, condition, which causes stress basically. So we have mat massage for stress relief. These are this is the stress relief at your fingertips. And this is for ourselves and the community. The first thing that we want to think about is your presence, okay? When you're in um, a group of people, you want to establish, establish a presence. You want to acknowledge that the people are there. This way, they feel connected to you in their environment. The best way to do that without physical touch is make eye contact. 
The second step is the permission process. Once you make eye contact, if you think if you're in a group of people, then you don't want to somehow, sometimes what gets us in trouble is just we go and start touching people and people back off like you're in my personal space. You have to have that permission. A lot of times the way we do that is with a handshake. So you present your hand. This is asking permission to give a handshake. That touch is very important in establishing the connection with the group, with the environment, with, with um, your peers, and especially, you know, I work with children. So this is something that really gets um, the school age kids, teenagers into, you know, so they, they don't feel like they're by themselves. So it gets them into each other and feel like they're, there is a place for them in the environment. For me personally, as a massage therapist, I always like to avoid handshakes, especially, you know, even before the pandemic, because to me, I work with my hands and people like to grab your hands and I'm like, what are you doing to my hands? So I always kind of shied away from handshakes, but I'm a hugger, so I like to hug. So one way to do that as a permission, because some people don't like to be hugged, is she open and say, hi, how are you doing? And then if the person says, oh, I'm doing well, then maybe you can lean in for a hug or, you know, they may wave their hand. Sometimes I wave <laughs> or a fist bump or something like that. So just permission and being cognizant of your environment around you and also your intention. People can feel your intention. Like I said about being in a crowded grocery store, I'm not just going to push someone out the way because I want to go. I'm going to um rest my hand on that person's back gently and verbalize excuse me i would like to get through that is my intentions so often we do things just because we want to get by you know we want to it's, it's all about us but if you lead with intention then that will also get the message across to strangers to your family members you know this does, this has to do with people in your in your small group, people out in the community, anything like that. And um, appropriate touch, the next thing that we wanna talk about is appropriate touch and anything, you know, above your back, above your shoulders, your hands, those are appropriate. Low back, legs, I don't know what you're doing here. It's not appropriate touch for strangers. Maybe if it's someone in your family who has back pain, then of course, you know, you can rub the back. And uh, of course, privacy. Some people really don't want you in their space, so you have to respect that. And uh, one way to get through that is through proximity, because you're still in that, you're not physically touching someone, but that closeness is still makes people feel like they're part of the community, that you can speak to them in a way that, um, that makes them feel like they're that they're not alone, they're not isolated, especially in this time of isolation that we have. People need to feel like they you respect their privacy, but also you're interested in them. So just because someone doesn't, you know, think that you're too close in their space, doesn't mean that you just have to go on and leave them alone. You can still um, stand in their in their appropriate space that's comfortable for them, and make that eye contact, establish your intentions and then move on from there. Okay, and so that's it. This is the way to contact me. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Village Academy for Families, also under my name, Anita Prendergast. It's awfully hard to spell my last name, so that's why a lot of times I just send people to Village Academy for Families. And then also my Village Academy courses web, um, website is up, where you can find courses um, on my MITS program, Massage for Infants, Toddlers, and Teens, that goes through the permission process and basically how to raise confident and compassionate children so that we can communicate better, so that we can help them communicate better in our house and out in the community. And that's what I have. So are there any questions? Wow, thank you, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing that information. Tell me, what was that second statistic you gave me? I got the 75 to 90%. Actually, those first two, 
those first two could you go over those again i thought right that yes so, so um the 25 i forgot the specific um percentage but um stress is responsible for how you treat each other in your household yeah. so that's you know so a lot of times when we um think about oh why would someone the domestic violence that we have here in, in America is that stress. It doesn't necessarily have to be that that person is a bad person, but maybe they lost their job. Maybe, you know, they came home and, um, you know, they feel like they're not making enough to support their family. And then your kids are asking for this. And you can, so it's all of that stress buildup that makes you snap. And like I said, you have that low level where you're never really have those positive hormones take effect that low level of anxiety is just right there, just waiting to just go over the top. And um, then you have that, that stressful environment. Yeah, and they call it being triggered, right? Trig exactly, exactly. <laughs> so my philosophy is if we catch, you know, I work with children. So if we catch it early, starting with the infants and with infant massage, it's not just for the infants, it's, it, it helps the infants. That's to me, it's like a byproduct but it's for the parents, you know, it's for the parents to make that connection with, with um, each other, you know, to make the connection with the baby. You know, how many times have you heard of, um, you know, the shaken baby syndrome or, you know, parents leaving the kids in the cars and, you know, it's like, if you make that connection with your family, with your infant, toddler, whatever it is, you're not leaving them in the car, you're not shaking them, you know, even the caregiver, if it's like the step parent or the, you know, the parent who's not normally the caregiver, they're not doing those things because there's that connection, that physical connection that people need. Um, I don't want to talk too long, but um, a lot of times we say, um, you know, breathing exercises, which is really, really helpful for stress relief. That's an important thing, but the one thing that we have to add into that is the physical touch. Because like I said, that's how you feel connected to that person, to that environment. I loved that you brought out, and I've never heard this before, that touch is the only sense that is reciprocal. Yes. I've never heard that construct of our sensory input before, but that is amazing right and it just goes to show how important touch is and that's one thing that you know once we get to a certain age you know once pretty much our kids start the school age we teach them don't touch don't talk to strangers you know your your safe space which is important but again we have to look at the intention the appropriateness of your touch and um just making them confident and confident that they can say no to touch or that you respect their space and everything like so we, it's a tool that we have to actually teach from an early age and you know some kids you know the little the 19 year old who went into the um, FedEx place just the other day and shouted he's 19 years old he's 19 you know that to me it breaks my heart and um you know, it goes to, did he feel connected to a community, right. you know? And was there someone in there who could, who could have, or, you know, maybe could knew how to reach out and like look him intently, intentionally and see him in the eyes and, you know, offer friendship, you know, offer that connection, a pat on the back, something, you know, for him to open up and maybe say, okay, well, you know, I'm stressed. I need to feed my family. You know, whatever is bothering them. You know, so that's just my the way that I deal with stress is that fight and the fight in me. I'm not gonna go out and stand on anybody's and with a with a you know with a flag or whatever and and shout and scream. You know, I'm not going anywhere to, <laughs> out in the public to do that. You know, I'll give money and I'll give my expertise. What I know works with um, communicating with people and will help with the um, the mental illness that we, that's plague in our country. Thank you so much. So yes, everyone, um, if you are on the Zoom, we would love for you to type any questions you have into the chat. I think we're set up for that. Um, and I, uh, yeah, we did have chat 
interaction last call. Um, and we got a question about how to raise your hand to contribute. So uh, Mr. Hope, if you could give us any more instructions about how you've set up the Zoom, we would love for the contribution of our um, listening audience. And you're muted, Mr. Hope, so I can't hear you right now. Uh, there we go. Um, so there is a, and by the way, I, I thank you so much, Anita Prendergast, 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 so I'm working it out, too. Uh, Prendergast, uh, for your um, uh, being here today uh, as, our, as our guest and providing this information that people can use to understand their bodies better and understand human interaction and understand how better to deal with stress and to manage stress. And I'm so glad that uh, Dr. Singletary found you and brought you on in uh, so you can be our guest speaker today. I really am enjoying you. you uh, you're here on our, on our program. Um, now, for those who have questions, there is a little um, icon there that says chat under, uh, if you're on the Zoom call, is a, it says more. Under more, it'll give you an option for chatting. And uh, you can chat on the sidebar there. We can see your message. And um, fact, I'll just lead by example. Hi, this is me, you know, and um, people can follow suit from what they see and chat on. And they've got a question. There you go. Chat. Yeah, and make sure that when you do, it's sent to everyone because sometimes the chat will send to just one person privately and everyone can't see it. Okay, and we do have a hand raised. So Juanita, and I'm leaving you pinned, Anita, because I do have some more questions for you. So <laughs> if you don't mind, um, let's see, Juanita, if you unmute yourself, you can. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me, Dr. Lisa? Loud and clear. Wow, thank you. Technology, talk about stress, Anita. Wow, what a great presentation. Um, so Anita, my name is Juanita and I live in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, a couple hours west of Seattle, right in the heart of the state. Um, we have very beautiful soil here and we're known for our apples. Um, Stemilk Growers has billions of acres of uh, beautiful apples, and we're heading toward our apple blossom time. Um, but Anita, I have a wonderful massage therapist, holistic massage therapist, um, and I met her through a sister in the Lord of mine, it's her daughter, and she's been on this call several times. Um, her mother owns an SD501, and um, Carmen, my holistic massage therapist, is in business with me with um, an Avacyn, which is when I saw the topic, stress at your fingertips, um, myself and Adrian, who's on the line with us right now, he's in California, he owns one of these devices. Um, I'm a 63 young lady and I've been labeled in the medical field disabled. I was attacked by a dog. So we, even when you mentioned that dog um, in this conversation, I kind of got the EWG beast, although it's more of a mental, I know a dog, a black lab attacked me um, six years ago. And currently um, I am very much into touch. I'm, I'm a hugger, I'm a, um, yesterday I went to a brand new, for me, a brand new Caribbean restaurant. And the gentleman there was incredibly handsome, Brazilian. And he had these semi-chocolate skin as myself um, and these blue eyes. And he was wearing one of those stupid ass masks. And there wasn't many of us in there. Um, and I cannot wear a mask due to medical reasons, plus 
my constitutional right. Um, but when I looked in his eyes and I was completely honest with this man and I said, my girlfriend sent me in here to meet you a few months ago. <laughs> <laughs> and she knows my status and my desire according to the word of God is for me not to be alone and um, I was in there with a young 19 year old caregiver I have a few caregivers and I'm now using a walker which I wasn't a, a couple of weeks ago um in the protocol for people with walkers and wheelchairs is not as it should be. I mean, you, I was in a motel room displaced for a moment and I couldn't even get the, I went in there on my two feet and came out in a walker and I couldn't even get into the restroom with the walker, you know, and, and I had embarrassing moments where I didn't make it and I needed the, hotel housekeeper to do my laundry for me and I've known Dr. Lisa and Mr. Hope for several years and they know that it's not who I am but I made it through that moment and I just honestly believe that touch is so so vital and it is not good for man or woman to be alone and right there in that very first chapter of the good book that we read, you know, God says, I'll make him a help meet. And so as you, Anita, are a help meet to your husband, as you mentioned, you understand um, that touch comes in, in many forms. You know, it came through the food. When, when this gentleman uh, took my order, I said, I'm very, this is my first time I've ever had Caribbean food. What would you suggest as I'm, you know, hanging onto this young man's arm in, in the counter to keep my balance? And the owner, Carlos, described the food to me. And I said, as a first time person, would you please just make me whatever you would recommend? And I was literally just going in there to use the restroom. Um, which I must add, Dr. Um, Mr. Hope, any restaurants or facilities that were open in the last year have to be handicapped accessible. So what impressed me most about this little hole in the wall was that it had a ramp and the ramp had handrails all the way to the bathroom. And the door to the bathroom was like one and a half times the opening of any door that we normally go through mm. in the bathroom when I asked complimented Carlos on the bathroom he said that by law it need needs to be like that and I said well thank you so much because like I don't look disabled but that bathroom was like I've been telling everybody about the bathroom in that place just because it was very clean and actually, and I told him about Congan water mm. and I said, sir, have you ever heard of Congan water? When he asked about the beverage we would like to drink. And I said, I've got my own. I make this Japanese water at home. And when I said Japanese, of course he lit up. He says, Japanese water. And I said, this machine I've had for 12 years produces seven types of water in one of them would the 2.5 acidic water will clean and sanitize I don't know what you're paying for the product that you're using but it's obviously immaculate in here what if you could reduce your expenses by investing in this and I tried to get his home address no <laughs> um, I tried to get um, an email address or something, but they're in the process of updating their technology to communicate. But I will definitely go back and share that with him and invite him here to my home to experience it. So anyway, long story short, thank you, Dr. Lisa, Mr. Hope. Um, I did stress out this morning when 
Dr. Lisa sent me the link and I thought, oh my God, I I wanted to invite Adrian and Adrian I know probably has his hand up right now. Adrian is a professional caregiver. And Adrian is caring for his Thea and Theo in Watsonville, California. And he has been a great blessing to my life. And and so Adrian, are you on? Are, can you raise your hand or? Well, we'll, we'll check, we'll, we'll check with Adrian, you know, but um, um, thank you for your commentary, Juanita. And we hope that everything that, you know, goes well. Uh, so um, stand by. So, um, so we also do have a question that came across from our Facebook Live um, audience, and it's from uh, Jordania. Uh, she's asking uh, to uh, Anita Prendergast, I'm gonna practice that name, to Anita Prendergast, what suggestions can you give to us parents to help bring our children, especially teens, out of their rooms and to stay and eat more healthier, to stay healthier and to eat healthier? <laughs> yes, that is a great question. Thanks, Jordania. Jordania. And um, thank you also, Juanita, for your comments. Um, the main thing that I say with teens especially is, um, is modeling the behavior. So a lot of times we think that teens are not paying attention, but they are paying attention to everything we do. It's like they do what we do and not necessarily what we say. So you model that behavior and always invite them, you know, whether you get a no or not, you know, just always, you know, say, oh, come eat. Don't you want to eat with me? Or, you know, just const just being persistent. I have what I call the P's of, you know, the massage, of providing massage. And um, one of them is how to get teens, especially teens, because, you know, a lot of times they, they think they're so grown and, you know, they know everything and uh, we have to give them that space, but um, just be patient with them, to be persistent, to, um, you know, have them just look at you and, and copy what you do. So if you eat healthy, you know, and like my daughter, she won't eat vegetables, she'll literally pick every vegetable out of whatever it is, I'll try to sneak. And then sometimes you have to sneak it in. I puree vegetables so you can't pick them. <laughs> so you can't pick it out, especially um, if I'm doing something like spaghetti or, you know, um, she likes the white sauce now, the Alfredo. And I'll like make, I'll like puree, um, what is it called? The squash, the butternut squash. And mm. they can't pick it out. So <laughs> and uh, one thing that we say is, is, um, if they don't eat vegetables every day, it's fine, but have a day where, um, you know, this is a, vegeta a vegetation, a, a vegetarian day meal, you know, Fridays, you know, sometimes have the fish Fridays or whatever, you know, just have one day out the week where, you know, you're just gonna have vegetables. You know, I don't know how, how much they, how much room they have to, to buy their own food, but if they're hungry, <laughs> They'll come out the room and they'll eat, you know, to, so just be persistent. That would be my advice, persistence and model the behavior. Can you share with us some more of those P's? So sure, um, we went through some of them as the P as far as being present, you know, being present, um, not, all, not on your phone. If you're asking them how was school today, you know, don't say how was school today and then go off and, you know, check your, the text message or whatever, you know, just intentionally, intentionally, you know, wait for the response. And um, one thing is, as far as, you know, just ask, as far as asking general things, ask specific, what did anything, you know, funny happen today? And, you know, sometimes my kids are like, why, what did you hear? You know, they think I'm snooping <laughs> on them on their social media. I'm saying, I just want to know if something funny happened. So um, um, definitely the permission, um, what did I say? The, um, presence, establishing your presence. And as far as um, doing massage is the permission process. That's so important because, um, you know, we have to ask permission. This way kids, especially kids know that they have an option to say yes or no. They have control over their bodies. So, um, and then 
persistence, being patient. You're the parent and know that you are the parent and that they're watching you. And um, yeah, those are the main ones. And as far as doing the actual massage, we have the pace and the pressure and you know, the position and things that, that come across that you're not sure about. Thank you. Um, I was, what Juanita brought up, brought, going into the restaurant and when I was going through the senses, I thought of taste and um, like that would only be reciprocal if you were eating something that was alive. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that we're not probably wouldn't that. be reciprocal. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody losing in that negotiation. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I thought of the, there's a cartoon of a, um, a pelican. Oh, and, a frog. Yeah. And each of them have each other by the throat. It's, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Okay, yeah. so yeah, everyone, um, there's a way to raise your hand if you want to uh, ask a question or um, if you, uh, oh, is th there is a, um, oh, I'm the host now. Okay, thank you. Can I just make a comment more about um, what Juanita was saying as sure. far as, um, being stressed in your environment. You know, there are always things and people who think differently than us. And if we just remember that the only actions that we can control are our own reactions, then that would make things so much more simple in our lives. Like I can't control, you know, whether this person has an appropriate restroom in their restaurant. You know, if they I find someone who does, I'm gonna patronize that restaurant. But if I go to a restaurant that doesn't have that, then that restaurant doesn't deserve my patronage. So I won't go to that restaurant. So just know that you can control, even with kids, just give them the, um, you know, the presence to know that you can only control yourself and your reactions to, to things that happen to you. So the moment you try to control this and control that, then it's a losing battle as far as your mental health. Thank you. Now you use the word chronic as opposed to acute where, you know, we're designed for acute sympathetic reactions, which can be healthy. You know, you're running, you gotta run away from the bear. So <laughs> you, you know, you don't want your body energy occupied with your digestion. And there's a logic to the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Um, but that word chronic. Now, when I was in medical school, we defined chronic as something going on for six months, mm. right? 20 years plus later, um, that's down, that was down to two months. And, you know, that's because there's I think multiple factors. There's so many extra stresses in the environment and our nutritional status is going down. Our ability to handle, to react to these stressors is uh, diminishing. But even at six months, right? As a definition of chronic stress, we're well over a year of global chronic stress. So I think this topic that you have and the service that you bring to families and the community, particularly the young is so, so important. So thank you, thank you so much for you. everything that you're doing and for sharing your wisdom with us today. So can you share with us again, just how to get in touch with you, um, you know, when, if people want to hear more. Certainly, certainly. And I'm glad that you said that about the children because they are the real ones that, uh, that, are, that we need to focus on it is because how do they process everything that's going on with them, no matter what background they're in. They need ways to process that. And a way, and um, I think I have a way <laughs> that would at least help them. And the way to get in contact me is through my website, villageacademycourses.com. That's where you'll find more information about the massage for infants, toddlers, and teens, and how to, way, to raise confident and compassionate children. So, um, and it has a bullying um, con, um, component to it, so to avoid bullying. 
And um, also on my Facebook page is Anita Prendergast. <laughs> like I said, it's, people always spell it, you know, with so my faces on there. So if you go in there and see my face and that's it, or um, Village Academy for Families for Facebook. And I do often go on, maybe not often enough, but <laughs> I go on live and talk about different topics about um, stress relief and children and things like that. That's excellent. So. Uh, um... We can see your last name on the Zoom, but I'm going to spell it for those who can't see it. <laughs> Maybe it's too small. It's Anita Prendergast, P-R-E-N-D-E-R-G-A-S-T. And it amazes me, like even the younger um, kids, like they say it the, the Teddy way. And I'm like, I'm not going to say it to not confuse people, but I'm like, how do you know Teddy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's that's amazing. Yeah, these kids, the they're listening they to know, the, and they they talk about modeling. They're listening to their parents' music. Yeah, yes. yes. <laughs> and uh, I was Thank walking you, to a school once, and I heard this kid going, ch 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 ch, -ch changes." <laughs> I looked at it. I was like, "What do you know about ch 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 changes?" <laughs> like, my dad plays it stuff all the time. <laughs> they know. They know. <laughs> So, Mr. Hope, it's four minutes of two, but we've got three hands up. What you gonna do? I guess we better take those questions. <laughs> uh, let's see now. Uh, we've got Adrian. We're gonna unmute Adrian and ask him to unmute. Okay, Adrian, you can unmute yourself. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Okay, can you hear me? Absolutely. Perfect. Oh yeah, no, I just wanted to add some, I really appreciate all you guys and the great job you guys are doing. And uh, thank you, Juanita. Um, I don't consider myself a professional, but I try to do my best. Anyway, I know one of the greatest things for stress release is laughter. Uh, I've been almost beat up when I was a child, most of my life for laughing when older guys were gonna beat me up and stuff. And I would just laugh, you know, it's my way to, I guess, fight the fear. Nice. But uh, anyway, uh, I just want to give a water joke real quick. Does anybody know how to make holy water? No. How? Anybody how? Holy water. I guess we pray over the water. Uh, you guys give up? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. We boil the hell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's all I had. Thank you guys. Have a good weekend and may God bless you all. And I hope to see you on the next call. Thank, Thank you, Adrian. You. I just have to say that laughter is certainly one of the techniques that I teach to help relieve stress. It instantly boosts your mood. And, and um, that was the topic of one of my Facebook lives, just laughter, laugh, laugh, laugh. So you're doing a, you're doing a good job. Awesome. awesome. All right, we've got uh, Dale from um, Cross Country. Go ahead, Dale, you can unmute yourself now. El Dorado. In the heartland. I think you can unmute yourself. Go ahead, Dale. Go ahead and unmute yourself. It, it allows me to uh, to ask you to unmute yourself. I don't know if I can physically go in there and do it. No, he has to do it. Come on, Dale. You can do it. Hit that unmute button in that lower <laughs> left corner. There you go, Dale. Welcome aboard. You have a okay. Question? You can hear me now? Loud and clear. Sorry, somebody was at the door delivering some eggs that we had ordered. Um, uh, I just wanted to ask if you said this, I missed it. I wanted to ask Anita where she's located. Uh, Anita, are you in the uh, Baltimore area or where are you? I am in Atlanta, so the suburbs of Atlanta, Duluth, Georgia. Oh. But my services are online. They are um, I'm mobile, as we all had to do, you know, since last year, it taught us that there are different ways to service our clients. And um, so, you know, I'm pretty much in, in accessible anywhere. <clears throat> okay, well, thank you for that. I guess I won't come over next week, but. I <laughs> <laughs> <far> will travel. <laughs> all right. But Janet can take courses in how to massage. Definitely. So some of the courses, like I said, um, I do focus on um, couples as well. So it doesn't have to be a husband, and wife, or, you know, partners. It'd be um, mom and daughter, father, son, just, you know, couples and how to, um, one of the things for Mother's Day is how to give an awesome foot massage. <laughs> that, 
brought a big smile to Janet's face. <laughs> <laughs> I love to get massages. And whenever the uh, the the local uh, uh, chiropractic people put, uh, when you buy one, you get two, uh, two, a free one. I, I, that's when I buy two or three of them. Massages. And <clears throat> the, the last uh, gal that I went to, uh, well, I prefer a massage that is just kind of soothing and all that kind of stuff. But the last gal I went to, she had a new, a, a different approach and she was really digging deep. And she said, you know, that stress uh, tightens up my muscles. And, and so she was really digging deep. And then she said, uh, you know, go home and drink a whole lot of water because I've released a lot of uh, what it, whatever it is that comes out of your muscles whenever you, uh, whenever she massages them. Mm -hmm. I forgot the word. Toxins, probably. I yeah, when you say toxins. I'm glad yeah. when it's over. <laughs> I know. And that's yeah. one thing you can definitely, as a massage therapist, we want you to tell us, you know, I don't know how much experience she had, but, um, you know, definitely if something is not comfortable to you, because the bottom line is you have to enjoy your massage. <laughs> you have to get enjoyment in order to release those feel good hormones. So if she is, if it goes in and sometimes people come in with big, tough knots and just the relaxation, we know it's not going to relieve that. That's fine. Um, you know, you can gradually work yourself up to the more pressure, but if your intention is to just relax, that's going to make your shoulders relax and that will eventually get rid of those tight knots. Maybe not as quickly as the massage therapist would want, but it will definitely um, eventually. So next time just, you know, to say, okay, I know what you're saying, but I just want to relax today. <laughs> That's interesting, though, but like a lot of the rolfing technique and the deeper techniques, um, the ones that I have met, the practitioners that, that, that I've met have come from Eastern Europe. And I mean, they have a whole system, like they have the hot springs or they have, the, you know, and you go from the table to the bath and the, like, it's, it's um, you know, a lot more uh, of a cultural and um, a lot more holistic uh, event for them than it is when you translate that to here, when you just get on a table and you're doing it. You know, it's a, it's a whole different situation, but I still don't want to have to say, I'm so glad you stopped. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. All righty, and Irene had her hand up Yep. But I don't see her now. Yeah, Irene, what happened to you? <laughs> I'll give you the opportunity to unmute herself just in case she accidentally hit the button. Well, so while we wait for Irene, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. You know, we've put you through a lot of changes over the last couple of weeks, and you've followed us. You've, you've, you've just kept going, and you've found us. And so we thank you for joining us. Um, and if you do find value in this broadcast or in our, we're going to put it on YouTube, um, please like us, love us, subscribe, do all the things. And also, I, I would love for those of you that I text, if you don't get emails from me about Congo Water Radio, please text me your email address and I would love to put you on our email notification because um, I do that, like I will email a recording of today's call. So those of you who get, who have hear from me with text only, please text me your email and I'll drop you right into my contact list. There's that. <laughs> Good job. So, um, so we thank you all for coming to the Condon Water Health and Information Call here on Condon Water Radio. We once again thank Anita Prendergast. 
Perfect. <laughs> Grandma told me how to sound things out when I read them. And, um, and of course, Dr. Lisa Singletary, our, our local and uh, resident uh, board certified physician here to help us with all information we need for our health and, and wellness. And, um, and then we'll see you again. I'll pass the closing to Dr. Singletary. So you can find us on Wednesday and Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern here, where you are right now on the Zoom or um, on Facebook Live. Uh, sometimes we might not have Mr. Hope, but I'll be here to carry on. And I will trust that I have you guys carrying on with me. All right. So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us on Kungan Water Radio. Have a great, <laughs> great rest of the weekend, and we'll see you on Wednesday. Cheers. Bye-bye. And thank you, Anita. Thank you.